How would the earth be different if it was only 6,000 years old? Yes, I know. The title of this video is A Loaded Question. I learned how to do that from conversations I've had with a number of young earth creationists. Their questions often go something like, If not God, then who created the universe? Where the words who and created demonstrate that other possibilities are not even on their radar. The main thing I'd like to focus on here are the implications of their argument, which you rarely hear any of them address. Back when I was into various conspiracy theories and what I later discovered to be pseudoscience, I was puzzled that the books I was interested in were catalogued under Mind, Body and Spirit in the bookshops I visited. I thought of them as non-fiction and didn't think that they should be in the same section as religious books. Of course, I'm showing my age here. There was no such thing as Amazon.com back then. Very few people had mobile phones, and the internet was a thing called the information superhighway that a few students in universities talked about. Then, as my curiosity about non-fiction grew stronger, I started to discover that the books in the popular science section were actually far more interesting, coherent, and contained what I had unwittingly been looking for all along. A foundational framework of understanding which was reliable and could be built upon and even had predictive and explanatory powers. I had stumbled across the scientific method. Now, one of the things which virtually no one will self-identify as is stupid. In a similar way, virtually nobody self-identifies as a science denier. Yet millions of people point to others and call them science deniers. Of course, I'm referring to one group who claim that the Earth is only 6,000 years old, and another who claim it to be 4.6 billion. Those two numbers are orders of magnitude different. It would be like two people looking at the moon and arguing about whether it is 238,000 miles or 550 yards away. If it was orbiting at the closer distance, you wouldn't need a Saturn V rocket to get there. In fact, that would be the least of our worries as it ground the mountains and continents away. The point of this is that we can figure out answers to such questions by applying the scientific method to them. We start off by asking the question, then we make an educated guess as to what the explanation might be, which we call a hypothesis. The thing about hypotheses is that they need to be testable, so when we test them, we attempt to falsify them. If they are demonstrated to be false, they are discarded and we need to come up with a new hypothesis. If we come up with a hypothesis which cannot be falsified, and if it has explanatory and predictive powers, we provisionally call it a theory. A scientific theory is a tried and tested explanation for phenomena in nature, such as gravity, plate tectonics, germs, atoms and evolution. So when someone says that evolution is only a theory, they're right, but they don't understand what they're saying. If that person then claims that evolution has never been observed and therefore doesn't happen, what they should be doing is to present a new hypothesis which explains the diversity of life and biological descent with modification better than evolution through natural selection does. But what invariably happens when we question these evolution deniers is that they demonstrate that they don't even understand how the theory works. How can you claim that something is false if you haven't done your homework. Young Earth creationists try to wriggle out of this by claiming to have a superior understanding of science, which basically involves redefining words such as hypothesis, theory, science, and of course, evolution. So, with that out of the way, what are the implications of the biblically derived Young Earth hypothesis? Organizations Institutions and universities such as the Smithsonian, NASA, Harvard, UC Berkeley, Oxford, Cambridge, MIT, the National Academy of Sciences, Wikipedia, the Encyclopedia Britannica, the European Space Agency and so many more 
must all be part of a global conspiracy to suppress the capital T truth of one particular interpretation of the book of Genesis. Think about it. How likely is it that millions of the scientists who study nature independently and through numerous different fields of research all agree that the Earth is 4.6 billion years old and that evolution happens? The unearth creationists will often claim that it is an atheist agenda, or something like that. But all we need to do to falsify that claim is to point out that millions of the scientists themselves are devout Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus and Buddhists. The point is that when we apply the scientific method to the question of how old the Earth is, we don't come up with a figure of 6,000 years. You can only get that by interpreting certain biblical passages literally, or playing fast and loose with the data, much like a lot of politicians tend to do when talking about the economy or climate change. You might wonder why I keep making videos about young earth creationism. Basically, I think that scientific literacy is extremely important in this world in terms of making practical and sensible decisions which could have an effect on the long-term survival of our species on this planet, not to mention ecological stability, which also affects all of the other species we share it with. We are technologically so far away from being able to migrate off this planet that we need to assume that we will be here permanently. Understanding how we arrived at the conclusions about the age of the Earth and the diversity of life through an application of the scientific method will help us to make good decisions in the future, regardless of whether such things as gods or afterlives exist or not. Those of us who have children or remotely care about the well-being of future generations owe it to them to at least try to leave the earth and society in better condition than we found it. End of rant. Thank you for watching.